well, whenever you're in a building under an earthquake, you're in under a big earthquake, you're in for a very scary ride. A lot of typically lateral deformations to the building. Um, now this rocking frame is a little bit different in that since it also it moves laterally but it also rocks upwards, if you happen to be standing next to the rocking frame, you're going to feel the floor around you kind of being lifted up because again the column is rocking upwards and, and that lifting up might be on the order of uh, three or four inches in, in some of these extreme earthquakes. So what's new about these rocking frames is that they, they under a large earthquake they will rock but through this, these high tension, post tension cables that after the earthquake it will come back to a plumb position. Um, so there'll be no residual deformations in the, in the overall building and, and also the yielding and energy dissipation will occur in these specific fuses that can be easily replaced after an earthquake. The fuses in our buildings, the one that, that we focused on that actually we developed here at Stanford, it's a steel plate that we use uh, water jet cutting to cut uh, what look like butterfly shaped links in it. So when you see the fuse deform, it's kind of like fingers like this that are diffused, that are moving up and down. They're yielding the steel and by doing so they're dissipating energy. So the, the key thing that these frames offer is minimizing the damage uh, and that damage which there is, making it, thinking about it ahead of time so it's more quickly and economically repairable. And, and the idea is, aside from the minimizing the cost of repairs, is getting people back into buildings as quickly as possible. So avoiding building closures and when repairs are necessary, getting those done quickly so there's less disruption to the occupants and the broader society.